lockdown corner in the NFL is. This is the NFL. This is not. This is this is the real deal. Yeah. You got to have guys that can get off the field because if you don't, you got NFL quarterbacks that can convert third, ten, third and twelve, third and fifteen all day long easily. Fifteen yards is not a lot for an NFL quarterback. Mm-hmm. You got to have DBs that can get you off the field on third down. Period. And I think that we, our city, we just, I think we lack the knowledge of how important that is. For Pat Mahomes. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I, mean, I totally Mahomes. agree. You look at the playoff game, the last three third down conversions on the same play. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. You know, I mean, as a coach, and we'll, we'll get into some of this later, but, you know, you've got to have those guys you can count on a third down when your yeah. defense has put in the effort. To get them to That's a third money down. down, we call that money down yeah. because that is where you get your money. If you don't, if you can't win third down, you won't win football games. Yeah. Period. It's almost, I mean, some offenses, you know, really, you know, their their goal on on first and second down really is just to gain what they can. Yeah. You know, especially in the NFL, they're telling those quarterbacks, yeah. don't take the chance on first and second down. Yeah, take the chance on third down if you have to. Absolutely. But we're gonna we're gonna run. Tom a Brady play. can hit a third and eight all day. Yeah, you know, and so that's why you got to be able to one on one man up on guys, like mm-hmm. kind of like the Broncos did. Against you got to take Pats off one option. You just got to man up. Yeah, you got to take away. And and I think it was hard for the Chiefs to do that last year, obviously because we had that hole at corner. We got Scan Scandrick late. Yeah, we really never had a corner. All we, you no, know, and Skandrick, I mean, he came over from Dallas. The, he's not. I mean, to me, yeah, he's, he's not that good. From Dallas, who came no. out here? Yeah, he, he's not. He wasn't your, my boy. Your cowboy <laughs> corner. That you <laughs> he, like he, so he was okay. I mean, I was. I was like, hey man, this guy's how do you like the Cowboys? Good. You know, they have no chance to win the Super Bowl anytime soon. Oh, I, I know. Uh, the, my big thing right now is hashtag fire Jason Garrett because I'm tired of that redheaded guy. Why don't you go to the team? I'll tell you what. Here's my thought on the Cowboys. Jerry Jones sold himself to the devil when he went out and leveraged everything Troy Aikman you just go through that whole list of what he leveraged back then he's yeah. still paying the price in the salary cap for all that. Yeah. no he's See, not no he, he's that, not. That, he's that, that's, that's he's, propaganda uh, he, he, Jerry got that bread he got the real bread though <laughs> I, I mean money, money. I'm saying the Cowboys are the most uh, expensive he, most uh, he, he they're bought, worth the most out of any sports organization in the entire world yeah, but he took way advantage back in those days before the sure. big salary cap took place. I think Jerry Jones needs to just hire a GM. He's like the only owner who doesn't uh, no, have he, one. Jerry D- Jones just needs to like not step into the stadium on game days or practice days. Uh, He's a know. great businessman. I mean, yeah. he knows how to sell and market, bro. And those he has people. his his draft Damn. record post parcels is a lot about better than it was what do you think about Jerry? So I think he down. learned some things from Bill Parcells being in there <laughs> on how to evaluate talent. I mean, he just might be getting outdated. <laughs> yeah, as I much, mean, yeah, that too. Hey, no, hey. as much as as much actually, <laughs> and I, I really want to put the hammer on Gary, but actually with Jerry Jones, I can't. There's a stat out there that shows uh, Jerry how many Pro Bowl guys he's drafted. He's the most. Jerry Jones has the most by far. Pro Bowl guys. Yes, mm-hmm. it's it's and his his actually his draft record's really good. From the offensive lineman he drafted uh, seven or eight years ago mm-hmm. uh, to Dak Prescott to Zeke Elliott, um, I think the fault is uh, not a Jason. I think Jason Garrett's a really mediocre coach, and and they've kept quarterbacks too long there too as well. They're also See, I seems, like Tony Romo. I really liked Tony Romo. I thought Romo was a good seems quarterback. Real conservative. It is. It's just real. The, the, I, the, the, I, and the thing that ninety three ish. The, the just, thing that kills me. It's not that game Every anymore. week when I watch it, I swear, they will have a first and goal from inside the five. And they'll throw it. And they will throw it. Yeah. And you've, you've got Ezekiel Elliott, and you've got that offensive line that you're paying yep. all that money. Run it three times. Trust me, I've seen Mizzou do that so many times in my life. And, and I'm just <laughs> like, like, yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah hey, I know. They did hey. that when I played. Yeah. I'll, I'll admit this, Gary. I'm as excited right now to see KU – Start off the season as you are, Dallas, to start off the season. I don't know. We're, I don't even think we're going to get into that today. But hashtag Fire Jason Garrett. We're going to go to break, and we'll be right back after this. I'm Gary. This is Austin. And we're Midwest Mike's coming back at you. Uh, our guest, you saw him in the first segment, uh, Trey Hobson, did play at Blue Valley High School here in Kansas City. Uh, coming out of high school, he was the number 68 safety in the nation as well as the number 10 overall prospect in Kansas, ranked by Super Prep as the number 79 overall prospect at any position in the Midlands region. Uh, he helped lead his team to an undefeated 2006 season. They went 12-0 and won the state championship, had 31 tackles, two interceptions, returning both for touchdowns, 
as a cornerback and added 45 catches as a wideout for 837 yards and four touchdowns. First team all-conference in each of his last two years in high school. Played for Coach Steve Rampey. They're a, a legend on the Kansas side who Absolutely. got back in it last year yeah. uh, over in Lawrence. Yeah. But uh, before we get into some of your college stuff, uh, talk a little bit about you know just playing for Rampy, and, and I know we'll get into it here in a minute. You're coaching for uh, his son, or coaching with his son mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. who you played with. Mm-hmm. But uh, how was it playing for the legend, uh, Steve Rampy? Man, uh, we were just uh, – it's funny because I grew up with Zach, so uh, we always looked at – now, I, I grew up looking at – Coach Rampy win state championships earlier when I was a kid. Like so, mm-hmm. I was playing pee wee ball, and Blue Valley was going to state championships, and he was winning rings when I was little. So, growing up and being able to play for Coach Rampy was just kind of surreal. It's like you know, our whole lives we wanted to just be able to play for the varsity Blue Valley team, be a, be able to compete for a state championship because he had done it before. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we were kids going to the state championship because we played for the Little League Blue Valley yeah. pee wee team. So. My childhood just growing up in, in Blue Valley was great because it was all I ever wanted to do was be a Tiger. And I a lot of people don't know my older brother, uh, he moved from, uh, transferred from Washington and played for Coach Rampy in 97, I believe. They lost the state championship okay. that year. But uh, my brother played for him too, so that was another reason that I really wanted to play. Wa- Washington. Huh? Washington State. Washington, Washington or, High School in uh, KCK. KCK. Yeah, uh-huh. okay. Yeah, my brother DeAndre Gillis, uh, he returned a couple punts for Blue Valley, too. He's got some stats for Blue Valley as well. But, yeah, man, Coach Rabe is a great coach. We were really repetitive. A lot of people don't know this, but he took a concept in, I want to say, 2005. He took Utah, Utah's concept when they had Urban Meyer Mm -hmm. and Nevada's pistol concept and kind of put those concepts together. And that's how he started his new kind of pistol offense that he took to Pitt State with. Okay. And that's what we ran. So yeah. we, we kind of ran this new revolutionized system in high school that nobody could really stop it. And it was it was really fun playing with, for him. He was a smart, very smart coach. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously coaching on the Kansas side here and, and even on the Missouri side before, you know, you, you've heard of Steve Rampey. If, if you've paid attention to high school football in the Kansas mm-hmm. City area for any number of years, mm-hmm. um, you know, great guy. Yeah. Uh, so then 2007, uh, you went off to Missouri and redshirted that mm-hmm. first year. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2008, um, closed with a solid performance in Missouri's overtime win in the Alamo Bowl. Oh, yeah. Uh, made three tackles and broke up a pass. Yeah, that was my kind of like my coming out game a little bit. Okay. It was cool. It was funny. My freshman year, I actually was with the travel team. They didn't register me to like the fifth game of the year. Okay. I was in the starting rotation, the nickel rotation, and I traveled. And it was crazy because our first, my first away game was at Ole Miss. So oh, we got out of goodness. Oxford. Right, so and this is a, still Big Twelve, so this is yeah, not, we Big Twelve. It was an experience. Yeah, we, it's go. a Big Twelve SEC game. We traveled to Oxford, and man, we go down there. Long story short, we kicked the shit out of them. But at the same time, this just this like this, it just it kind of opened my mind to dang, like this oh. is college ball. Like it was crazy. Like Oxford was crazy. I mean, Confederate flags everywhere. Yeah, yeah. This type of art, like, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. Okay, so why is it in sports we don't kick the poo, we kick the shit? Yeah, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we talk a lot, and plus I play oh, defensive yeah. back, so you know that's what I'm all saying, I though. I mean, talk it, it, yeah. It's all about fun, right? Yeah, yeah for de- sure. Defensive backs, that's all they do is talk, uh-huh. you know. <laughs> uh, but anyway. The but that 2008 Alamo, yeah. uh, Alamo game, that was against Northwestern, right? I, I believe we played Northwestern, that was in the Alamo Bowl in uh, San Antonio. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a good game. I had I had fun that game. I had a kickoff tackle. If you go back and look at that game, I had a kickoff tackle. I flipped the guy, and he probably went like five feet in the air. Like, I just I nailed him. Oh, that's you nice. Go see it. That's, and that and that's, that's a back taller when, than you. Oh wow, yeah, I nailed him. Yeah, and that's you know that's back when you could still really hit guys. Yeah, you know, I mean, from I, what they've changed it to now. It was a side angle hit. He was trying to hit the gap, and I just kind of hit him on the side of his leg right here, and he just flipped. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's where, where, where everybody back home is sitting, gathered around the TV going. Yeah. But it was like like a Jerry Maguire moment. For yeah, you, for right? sure. <laughs> My family told me they were excited that night. That was kind of like the first night. I was, you know, primetime TV and stuff. I didn't really think much about it, but it looked cool when I saw it on TV. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 2009 uh, had another solid year uh, in reserve action, getting 17 tackles, two stops in each of the first two games, four tackles against Furman, 
Uh, one tackle against Nevada. Three solo stops in a game versus Nebraska. Yeah, that was one of my better games that year. That was the rain game. Yeah. It was super rainy in Columbia. We played that. I think that was in. And Dominican Sue had like two or three takeaways in the fourth quarter, and they came back and beat us. I don't want to. Oh, man. It. What what Big 12 game do you miss the most? Mizzou, Oklahoma, or Mizzou, uh, Nebraska? I used to really like the Texas A&M games, but I really, I really did, I really do like the Nebraska, the Nebraska for sure. The now, now when you played, was was OU good when you played? Yeah, oh, they're you know, good every year. Well, but there was a time where they weren't nah, good man, after Barry nah, Switzer, and and I, I, I you know, I'm yeah, old, yeah, I for sure. And every, every, hey, look, every time I was at Mizzou, that that's who that they stopped us from getting the national championship. It would have, it would have been, yeah. it would have been like eight, eight, nine, or ten. Where you guys would have played Oklahoma it was at the 07. 07? Well, what it was at, was um, at Arrowhead for the we, Big Twelve Championship. Yeah, we we did play. We beat KU, but then we lost to Oklahoma again. Oh, yeah, so right. was that eight that's or right. nine? We, we, yeah, we had lost one game to Oklahoma. KU was undefeated. So we beat KU, and then Arrowhead. you got to play Oklahoma again, then right? We played Oklahoma in the Big Twelve Championship, but lost. Well, yeah. So you, you were Bradford. on the, you were on the three years where KU and Mizzou played at Arrowhead. Then yeah, yeah. yeah okay, those, so you those were the yeah, fun those days. Border wars. Yeah, those were the fun days. Yeah, yeah. those are great. They need to bring that back. Well, no but doubt. both teams have got to be relevant to bring it back. Uh, if they want <laughs> to make money in this city, that would be a wise choice yeah. for the city to do. That's all I'll say. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, again, 2010 had a, a bunch of more uh, solid contributions in the secondary and special teams. Uh, you know, two tackles in the season opener against Illinois. Uh, you know, made a stop again in the win over Miami of Ohio. A stop late to kind of seal the victory. A uh, pair of tackles against Texas A&M and a stop against Kansas. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a couple mm-hmm. more teams that you just mentioned, you know, that you had a lot of fun playing against. Yeah. And then 2011, uh, in the spring, you, got, uh, you won the award for the most improved defensive back mm-hmm. and then had a – you know, great kind of senior year, mm-hmm. uh, you know, coming uh, in, in in that nickel package. And, you know, you'd played 36 games. So mm-hmm. you're one of the, one of the mo- more experienced guys right. on, on that roster. Right. Yeah, that was when I was a senior. So it was, that was a good year for me. I was a little bit more mature, and, and I could handle what everything they needed to give me and put on my plate. So it was good. Mm-hmm. It was good stuff. So, uh, you know, coming out of high school, you know, and, and transitioning to playing Division One college football, what was the biggest difference you saw, you know, kind of in that first year and first couple of years at Mizzou, that uh, uh, difference between high school and, and big time college ball? My first year, actually, I, I actually I led the room in production when I was a freshman. I literally led the room in production when I was a freshman. So when I first got there, I was 17. I was kind of naive to everything. I just liked mm-hmm. to play. Man coverage, cover three, that's all I really knew. When I got to Mizzou, they started implementing more cover two zone type stuff. And it was more of like a run Tampa 2 defense. And okay. so that, that kind of, you know, that I had to learn how to play cover 2 a little bit better and be a little bit more physical. Uh, but other than that, you know, everything else seemed pretty pretty decent. You know, I, I think I learned more as my older years uh, as far as just being what the NFL wanted from a defensive back, per yeah. se. Because a lot of things we did at Mizzou for DBs weren't really what NFL defensive guys were, defensive back guys were looking for. To yeah, be honest. Uh, I mean, I know they're you know kind of in that period too. Mizzou was turning out a ton of defensive linemen. Yeah, yeah, you I know that were going yeah. to the league. Yeah, we had Coach Cool. You know, yeah. he's Alabama's D line coach now. So mm-hmm. I mean, Nick Saban hired him, so he was our D line coach when I was there. And yeah, yeah we were put. Obviously, you remember all the D line yep. that went to the NFL. When and I, was I there. mean, you know, uh, like you said, what the NFL wanted from a defensive back because you know some people here. Hear the stat lines. You know, most of the time when people are talking about tackles, they're talking about linebackers because uh-huh. that's who's going to make the majority of your tackles, mm-hmm. no matter what your defensive scheme right. is. You know, so really, you know, it's about the, the pass breakups, and mm-hmm. really, uh, people notice defensive backs. The average fan notice defensive backs when they're way out of position, mm-hmm. Absolutely. or they make a great play. Yeah, you know, they don't notice just the the mediocre play mm-hmm. where the quarterback has to pull it down because you're where you're supposed to be. Right, right. And then that guy gets that sack. Right. That just comes from knowledge of being, you know, around football. You know, we've been around football forever, yeah. so we can notice those little things. I think we can just do better uh, teaching general public about the things that they, you know, might not understand. I think that's what we need to work better at, like. The importance of the little things that people don't realize, but they're huge football fanatics. Mm-hmm. There's still little bitty things that you can actually 
kind of monitor the game and look at. And I think that's what, you know, people should, should try and do more. But...